Our topic today is everything you need to know about scalp cysts or 10 facts that you need to know about scalp cysts. Welcome back. I'm Dr. Maria Azizian, a board certified general surgeon and IFM certified functional medicine physician. So number one, what are scalp cysts? Scalp cysts are located on the scalp and they're located immediately under the skin in a subcutaneous space. They present as a sac that has this whitish, yellowish, dense substance inside it. So I have to say very important that scalp cysts are not cancerous. They are completely benign and they're also not precancerous. They never turn into cancer. They're completely benign structures, benign cysts. Another name for scalp cysts is pilar cysts or trichalemal cysts. Number two, who gets scalp cysts? There's actually genetic predisposition for scalp cysts. Statistically, I'll start with statistics. They're more prominent in middle-aged adults, and also women are more prone than men. However, I have to say in our clinic, we see plenty of young people with scalp cysts, and we see plenty of men with scalp cysts that we end up removing. Also, I have to say that people who are genetically predisposed to having scalp cysts often get multitude, multiple scalp cysts. Very commonly, they would come in with one main uh, cyst that is bothersome, painful, or irritating, but then they also point out to me multiple little uh, tiny cysts that are scattered throughout their scalp. Number three, do these cysts cause symptoms? Yes and no. When they are small, and what I mean by small, just a few millimeters, let's say two, three, millimeters, like under five millimeters, so pea-sized little cysts, they are not symptomatic unless somebody starts picking at them um, and uh, constantly touching them. Anything that you pick and touch eventually will get irritated and is more prone to get enlarged and then get infected. So of course, if there are tiny little pilar cysts, I advise and recommend that my patients do not play with them and just leave them alone. So, but uh, these cysts are asymptomatic. They are not bothersome. However, once they start growing, once they start getting bigger, of course they become bothersome. And one of the main complaints that I hear from my patients is when they comb their hair, it just hits the cyst and it's actually painful. So pain is one of the symptoms. Another symptom is just irritation and uh, just discomfort. Itching also could be a symptom. And the bigger they get, the more symptomatic they are. So very frequently we deal with the larger cyst because that's when they are symptomatic for people who have them. So number four, what causes these cysts? Very similarly to other cysts, such as sebaceous cysts and epidermoid cysts, they're all sort of the same types of cysts in dif on different parts of the body. For example, you can see epidermoid cysts on the face, sebaceous cysts throughout face and body, and like pilar cysts on the scalp. That's what we're talking about today. But all of these cysts, they have the same mechanism of start. They are associated with the hair follicle. And what happens, to speak simply, the cells around the hair follicle, instead of just lubricating that hair follicle, actually are forming this sac. And inside of the sac, there is a this um, uh, protein substance that's called keratin. And it's interesting that this keratin could be sort of soft and gooey, cottage cheese-like, for example, for the cyst in, on the back, such as a uh, sebaceous cyst on the back, for example. But on the scalp, the keratin actually becomes much denser and it doesn't have that cottage cheese-like consistency. So, but essentially the mechanism or the etiology of why these cysts all occur is the same. It does start with the hair follicle. On that note, so number five is that why do these cysts have this specific and somewhat unique uh, texture and mobility? And that's very interesting because in most cases, that's not always the case, the scalp cysts, they are more mobile and they feel like a marble. And people describe they are very, very mobile and easy to, um, easy to palpate when they're sticking out. So why is that? Because they are denser. For example, a lot of times on the back, a cyst could become, uh, very, could come close to the skin and it's no longer mobile. It's just pr protruding, but it doesn't move under the skin. 
But on the scalp, in most cases, they are very well defined and they're easily palpable. And that's actually a good sign. Mobility of a smooth mass is a good sign of a benign, uh, benign mass. So it's always reassuring. However, if you're ever in doubt, please, please see your uh, dermatologist, your surgeon, your health pr practitioner, your primary care provider to make sure. Don't ignore that. And we will come back to that. But yes, the scalp cysts have this unique feature of being a little different. And when they are removed, they look like um, this, I call them yellow pearls because they're very smooth. They're very beautiful. They come as one, uh, uh, one sort of ball or oval structure. So number six, can scalp cyst lead to hair loss? Unfortunately, the answer is yes. When they are small, like let's say five millimeter or under, uh, then no, because they're barely protruding. Sometimes they're not even protruding because in some cases a patient would have to put their finger on them for me to find them because they're, they're not even raising, they're, they're not raised above the level of the skin. But once they start getting bigger, then I do see a lot of times there is a hair loss associated with that. For example, if you have a um, a two centimeter, three centimeter cyst, that's a very large cyst. And you always, oh, I shouldn't say almost, always see hair loss associated with that. So why is that? Because uh, the cyst start, is starting to push on hair follicles and poor hair follicles, they just can't function properly anymore. So uh, that's why I do advise if you have any mass that's growing, if something is actively growing, it has to be removed. But even if it's benign or considered benign, I would recommend that you remove it because once you get the bold spot, unfortunately, even if the cyst is removed, these hair follicles may never come back to their previous functioning form, unfortunately. Sometimes they could partially be revived, so to speak, but because of this continuous pressure of the cyst on the hair follicle, even if the cyst is removed, again, you may not be able to restore that hair. So please don't get it to the point that they're so large that they're causing a bald spot. And ask somebody, preferably your doctor, but you can even ask a family member if there's a, a bald spot forming because that will help you because sometimes we ourselves can't see it that well even with the use of a mirror. So, but yes, unfortunately, yes, larger cysts can cause hair loss. So number seven, how do we treat these um, cysts? So we treat them surgical. Well, first of all, the small ones, the ones uh, that are under five millimeters, and especially the ones that are asymptomatic, even they're like a little bit larger, let's say a seven millimeter cyst that is not protruding a lot, uh, protruding a lot and it's completely asymptomatic and it's not growing, then we just leave it alone. We don't necessarily need to remove every every little cyst on the scalp. However, once they become symptomatic, or of course, of course, if there's any concern of this not being an actually a pilar cyst and being something else, they are removed. So that's why um, uh, we first make sure that they're benign. So we evaluate them. So you should have it evaluated again by the, by your provider, and not just assume that if if it's mobile, that it's just a benign cyst. So how do we remove them? Uh, we do this a lot in our office where we actually, we don't shave any hair because that's very important not to shave any hair. And we just uh, numb it, make a small incision. The cyst comes out as one. And the goal of a surgeon is always to remove it as one and not as I call it piecemeal it because if it comes in little pieces, there's a higher probability that a little piece could be left over. If the little piece is left over, then it, it's more likely to cause a recurrence. So then it's closed with sutures and uh, then basically the patient can do whatever they want that day. There are no restrictions. We don't really put a dressing on. We put just a little bit of bacitracin. So it's a pretty simple procedure. I, I, as I, I always say, the most unpleasant part of the procedure is really the numbing with the numbing medication. That, that's always unpleasant, but I make it a specific point that we do not shave any hair uh, because, you know, in some people, regrowing hair after shaving may be a very difficult task and they may not regain that hair back. So we never shave any hair for these procedures. 
So um, the next number eight, which I sort of uh, started to um, discuss is what is the recurrence? It's interesting that if you remove the cyst completely, um, like a one structure, so one, let's say little ball like this, it comes out and it's beautiful. It's this yellow pearl, as I call it. So um, then it should not recur. However, why would you have a recurrence? So you could have a recurrence because in some cases, there could be another cyst lurking nearby that's very tiny and it can grow and it can turn into a full-blown cyst. And it's interestingly, sometimes when I, I'm in the process of re surgically removing those cysts, I see that there is a little, tw a little twin there. So after all these years of doing this, I always look for a twin. I look for a little one nearby. But to have a pure recurrence, just like something was completely removed and recurred, that is not that common. Usually recurrence would happen if something was left behind. And why would something be left behind? Something would be left behind, let's say, if the cyst was removed while it was inflamed or infected. And that is why that should never be done. As I have discussed in my previous videos about cysts, the cysts should never be removed while it's infected or inflamed because it's just impossible to completely remove it. We can drain it, we can open and let the pus out, and um, in some cases also give patient antibiotic when the cyst is infected, but I would not uh, remove it or I would not call my drainage procedure removal. So what I usually tell our patients, I say, well, we're going to drain the cyst, but so that you know, because we just drained it, we didn't remove it, it will well, almost 100% recur. So that's a different procedure. That's a drainage. So ideally with a removal, when you're coming for elective removal and your cyst is not infected, it's not inflamed, and it's completely removed as one piece, the recurrence should be very minimal. It should be less than 5%. So again, unless you have a little twin there, which I always look for. So that's very cute to see those little tiny cysts nearby that are nearby, but they're separate. So, so that's about recurrence. So number nine, which is also very important, is about self-diagnosis. A lot of times people who are prone to these scalp cysts, they already know them. So I do trust their opinion and I do trust what they say. However, even if you are one of these patients who are prone to multiple scalp cysts, don't just assume that everything that comes up on your scalp is a scalp cyst. Unfortunately, there are cancers that do arise on the scalp and sometimes they are harder to detect for your, let's say, primary care provider who is doing physical exam because it's just hard to find things in, 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 in the hair, so on the scalp. So please be vocal about that. Please bring it up to your primary care, to your surgeon, to your dermatologist, to whatever provider that you're seeing, please point to it because it does need to be evaluated. In some case, clinical evaluation is sufficient just to have somebody, a medical professional, reassure you that it's benign and you also would contribute to this conversation saying that, oh yeah, I noticed that a year ago it hasn't changed. That, that's all good. That sounds like a, your regular benign cyst. But in some cases, it is not. And unfortunately, there are bad cancers that could arise on the scalp as well. And that could be unfortunately missed. So please, please, please check with your doctor, with your health care provider uh, to make sure that it's nothing bad going on. So, and uh, the last point, number 10, is prevention. Can you prevent these scalp cysts? And the simple answer is no. Actually, you can't really prevent them because it's not that you've done anything wrong to make them come on. I mean, most people just, just notice it one day, so they haven't done anything. And it's not really the issue of hygiene or anything like that. So there is no prevention. And the reason there is no prevention, because the reason is related to your genetic makeup. It's not something that uh, was caused by improper co combing or anything like that. So essentially there is no prevention. So I hope you enjoyed this video and please like, subscribe, share so you don't miss any of my more upcoming videos on variety of medical topics, both in skin, in surgery, in functional medicine. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time. Bye-bye.